All right, guys, today we're gonna to talk about one of the most biggest challenges in high ticket sales, and that is overcoming the money objection. Typically, the money objection is the number one objection people come up with, especially in high ticket. The offers typically, the price point to it is higher than what uh, prospects are used to seeing a lot of times they get sticker shock and they hear the price and they just freeze for a little bit because perhaps they've not looked at a program like this before and they're just surprised to see the cost with it or even uh, a more sophisticated buyer that's seen coaching programs like this they need to determine is this really worth the money because it's a high ticket offer so we're going to talk about how to really overcome that pricing objection i'm going to walk you through it how to really overcome it and here's what it all comes down to from the high level if you want to overcome the money objection you just need to give your prospect context context is the most important thing that you can give them to overcome this objection So firstly, we need to help them understand what is the current cost. So in your discovery, when you're getting to know them better, we need to understand what is their problem and currently, what is their problem costing them? Is their problem costing them money currently? Is it costing them non-monetary things? And can we, can we achieve a value to that? Can we give a value to that? So let's give an example. If you are doing some sort of, of business offer of any sort, because they have this problem, are they losing money in their business right now? I have guys tell me all the time, hey, Brandon, here's my problem. And honestly, I am leaving this amount of money on the table every single month. And this is what I'm asking them. I'm saying, hey, you know, because this has been a problem for you, how much money is this costing you right now? How much money is it costing your business? And even if it is an offer like, let's say weight loss or fitness or something like that, we need to get creative and help them understand what is it truly costing you? Is it because you're not fit? Is it costing your ability to make additional money now? And if so, how much? Okay. Uh, also, look at hospital bills. If you're not fit, you're overweight, whatever it is, you know, how much more money is that going to cost you in health insurance, hospital bills, things of that nature, additional medications, things like that. So we need to help the prospect understand what are all the costs associated with having this problem and most importantly, not doing anything about it. And a lot of times prospects will get on the phone with you and they're really not thinking about how all of these dots connect. They're not thinking about what really is the cost here. And so giving them that context helps them understand the severity of the issue. And also think about this too. I will also future pace with them on costs. How much money is it gonna cost them in the next three months? What else is it gonna cost them in the next three months? How about the next 12 months? How about the next three years? Sometimes I'm really playing this out to help paint this picture that right now, if you have this problem and you choose to do nothing about it, you keep doing the same thing, what are really the, the costs here? And maybe there is a big cost over the next 90 days. Perhaps there is. Perhaps there's a big cost in six months. Perhaps there's a big cost in 10 years. And what does that look like if you do nothing about it? So again, it's giving them that context so they can understand this is what it's really costing me, costing my business, maybe costing my family if I don't do anything about this. Now, this leads me to the next point that I have, and that's future pacing. So just like I said with, with costs, we want to help future pace and help the prospect understand here is what it's going to cost down the road. So let's think about this from the other perspective. If we fix that problem, what do you stand to gain? How will this benefit you? So for a business offer, let's give this for an example. If I help you solve this problem in your business, how much more money is that gonna make you in the next 90 days? Like, honestly. And I'll tell you, prospects can almost always tell me, re like realistically, reasonably, I can make this much more money because I know my, my business, I understand the problem. If I get this problem solved, I can make this much more money uh, if the problem is fixed. Okay, so now we have context. Now we have context here. So if you stand to make this much money, 
Now, it makes a lot more sense that this is how much money is on the line right now. This is the money being lost, and this is the money that I stand to make if the problem is fixed, the problem solved, okay? So this could be 90 days. Maybe it's appropriate to look at six months, one year, three years, maybe five, 10 years down the road, depending on your offer, what that really looks like. It may make sense to really talk about that and have this have that un understanding. So typically, I'm a fan of looking at the next 90 days, especially in a business offer, because a lot of times people are thinking in quarters, as, as well, and plus, it's much more easier for the mind to understand that if I make a, an investment in a high ticket offer and I put that work into it, this is what I can reasonably expect to gain in 90 days. So this isn't a pipe dream. This isn't maybe in 10 years this may work out. This is realistically in 90 days, I'm gonna see this shift in my business. I'm gonna see this shift in my performance. So this makes a lot more sense. I have the context that I need as a prospect to make an educated decision on what I wanna do. Let's even say this isn't a business offer. Let's say it's, it's a fitness weight loss offer or something like that. There could be some money to be made a monetary gain in, in that path, but there could be some non-monetary things too. Let's think about this. And this is one thing I'm asking my, my prospects too. If we solve this problem, what else happens in your life? What changes? Do you get more family time? Do you find more happiness? Do you have the ability to do things you've never done before? And how does that feel? What is that worth to you? So that when you put that in context, it helps them understand this is the value that I'm getting. This is what I can expect as a result if I make an investment and put my time and energy into this program. Now, lastly, I've talked about this before. This is very important in sales, especially high ticket. When people make an idea or people make a decision to uh, purchase your product, buy into a, a program, this is what it looks like. They are making a decision initially based on emotion. They're buying emotionally. And then after they make that decision emotionally, they're reasoning with logic. So they use logic to reason. Buying emotionally, then they're reasoning with logic. And so this really helps complete the, the money objection. So what I do when I'm walking through an offer, before I even talk about costs with it, I first determine, hey, you know, money aside, it doesn't really matter right now, how do you feel about this program? How do you feel about this process emotionally? Like, do you feel honestly, and this is where I'll I do what I call a temperature check. So I'm checking how are they really into this program, this product, whatever it is, from a scale of one to 10 or from a scale of one to 100, I ask them, how do you honestly feel about it? And here's how I set the frame. I say, look, you know, this, this program is gonna take a lot of effort. It's, it's gonna require a, a lot of you. And I only wanna work with people that, are, that feel 100% about this. I mean, honestly, because people that feel 100% about it, they make really good clients. And then those are the people that succeed and that make great testimonials. So it's important for me to find people that are 100%. And if they don't feel 100%, well, that's when I'm asking more questions. Like, honestly, why is it? Is it maybe this, this isn't the right fit for you? And if that's the case, it's fine, totally cool. We'll shake hands and part ways. But could there be something else? So. I'm first of all getting a gauge on the emotion. Is there an emotional buy-in? Because if they're not emotionally bought in, the price just doesn't matter. It just doesn't, not in high ticket, not in high ticket, okay? So emotional buy-in is very important. So once we get that, once I get the emotional buy-in, they tell me, yeah, I feel 100% about this solution to my problem, about this product, this offer, whatever it is, okay, great. So now I remind them and I do the future pace. So. After I explained to you all the details, this is the process, this is how we do it. Now, what can we reasonably expect you to get out of doing this? What does this look like for you in 90 days? What does this look like for you in, in 180 days, six months, a year, whatever it, it is? So, and I'm having them tell me, like, after everything I share with you, what does that look like for you? So now they're telling me the value that they're getting out of this program, because I want to understand what is their perspective. Okay, how are they reasoning with this and where is their logic? So them telling me helps me understand how their brain is thinking. So after I get a high emotional buy-in and after they walk me through, this is what they expect to get because I'm honestly asking them. I, I mean, I'm always leading them, but I, I want them to really tell me, what do you think? So when they tell me they're, they're bought in and then 
They're telling me this is the reasonable outcome that they expect to, to get. And if they, they trust me in that process, then it's so much easier to go through the money. Even if, even if the cost of the program does shock them, it surprises them because it's more than what they expected, it's totally fine. If the emotional buy-in is there, and reasonably we can say, okay, if you make this investment, now honestly, do you stand to get a good return on your investment here? Like honestly, yes or no? And if that's so, the answer is yes, it makes that process so much more easy. So that is how you overcome the money objection. If this video was helpful to you, like and subscribe. If you have any questions for me, hit me up. I'm very accessible. Hit me up on Instagram. My handle is at brandon.gif.